Hey guys, Comet here. Welcome to episode 8 now, I think, on my Overly Scienced series. Last, last episode, we built this Volcano Tamer here, and I am going to revert it back to uh, the way I was originally going to do it. I was doing some math, and having this Auto Sweeper work constantly because this conveyor chute is here is just going to... Oh, go away. Is just going to ruin the power efficiency of the whole design. Um, but in this episode, I want to build a better power plant because this is just not cutting it anymore. And I am going through too much of my coal up here. So I'm going to break back into here. I'm going to deconstruct this. And I'm going to deconstruct this too. I've settled on something that looks like this now. The conveyor rails will put things through this sensor here, just like it was before. It will try to go through this shutoff. If it is too cold, then it will go through the shutoff. If it is not, then it will bypass it and go over to this bridge, where it will be put back down into here. And then it'll just keep going through the loop. So this will cause a buildup of micrograms on the rail that will be too warm to ever leave. But I can control that right here. So if I do get too much, uh, if the rail gets too clogged, then I can just flick this for a second, let all the tiny amounts go through, and then flick it back. This has now reached max gas pressure in here, so I'm going to go ahead and deconstruct this and then permanently seal it up. We've got all this extra hydrogen on this line. I want to try and save it, so I'm going to flip the direction on this bridge. And then that will force all of the hydrogen onto this line here. I'll empty this line, and now I can deconstruct this. Now I'll just block that off, and we're good to go. The other thing I'm also going to need to do is get some petroleum up into here. And I can do that with a bridge right here. So I'm going to put a thin layer of petroleum in here, just like I did up here, and that should improve power efficiency. Now all we have to do is wait 46 more cycles to see this actually work. Now I need to come up with a better power plant. So we're going to be using petroleum generators, and one pipe can feed five generators, because each generator consumes... 2,000 grams per second, and one pipe can feed uh, 10,000 grams per second. So if you divide the 10,000 by the 2,000, you end up with five generators. So I'm thinking I will put it right up in here. It's kind of out of the way of everything else. Now that the excavation efforts are complete here, I can start planning this out. And have a bottom here, insulated tile. Petroleum generators are three wide, and I'm going to have five of them, so that's 15 tiles, and then I want two on each side for a ladder, and then I'm also going to need two more on each side for the wall. So that will be 19 tiles long. Mm. But I do want room for a battery so I can turn it on and off, so I need to make it two wide Two more wide. Two wider? Two more wide? How would you say that? Two blocks wider. There we go. Now this first layer down here is going to be where all of the water is collected. Then up here is where I'm going to need my carbon skimmers because petroleum generators produce a lot of carbon dioxide. And I don't have access to slickter, slicksters yet. I think they all ended up dying. I don't see any more down here, so I'd have to wait to get some from the printing pod. But I find carbon skimmers to be a little bit easier. I gotta make sure I make it out of steel, too, because it's gonna get hot in here. Well, actually, no, because I'm gonna have a cooling solution, so I can make it out of... Well, we'll do gold amalgam. So a petroleum generator produces 500 grams per second of carbon dioxide. 
I have five of them, so five times 500 is 2,500 grams of carbon dioxide. A carbon skimmer removes 300 grams per second, so 2,500 divided by 300. Where's my calculator? I'm gonna need nine carbon skimmers rounding. And I'm gonna make these out of gold amalgam too. I can only fit eight. Okay, um... I can make it one wider, and that will solve that problem. I also need to move these natural gas generators up to here. And I can fit four of them. I'm going to connect these up to the automation so that I can control when they activate based on battery power levels. I want the natural gas generators to burn first, then the petroleum generators. This is not going to be my final power plant. This is just going to get us into space and kind of through the mid-game. And then once I have space materials, I want to build a sour gas boiler, and then that will be my permanent power solution. Now for water extraction, a petroleum generator produces 750 grams per second of polluted water. That can be extracted by one pump, but it will need two water sieves if I want clean water out instead of polluted water. So what I'm going to do here is make a little floor like this. I'm going to put a pump here, and then I'm gonna put in my two water sieves like this. And then I can take that water and do whatever I want with it over here. Now, these carbon skippers are going to need clean water as well. So instead of pulling water from here, what I can do is use a water sieve in this area and just recycle the water. So the water sieve will con just continuously feed back into the carbon skimmers. And actually it might be better if I move these over to this side and then I can put this water sieve or put the water sieve for the carbon skimmers over on this side. I think that'll be easier on the piping. Now there's nine carbon skimmers here, so that's going to require two water sieves as well. So a system like this should work. The polluted water coming from the water from the carbon skimmers will go up into this pipe, enter this bridge, jump over, down into here. This will then feed into the two water sieves. The clean water will end go this way and feed all of the carbon skimmers. So this will be a closed loop. And then over here, this will be the water sieves for the outgoing water from the petroleum generators. Now I am going to need a way to control the water level in here because I don't want this pump working all the time because when the water level gets too low it will sometimes off gas polluted oxygen and I don't want to have to deal with that. I want to keep it just carbon dioxide in here. So I'm going to deconstruct uh, one of these corners here. I think I'll do this one and this will just monitor the water level and turn the pump on when it gets too high. And we don't want these carbon skimmers to pull a vacuum in here, so I'm going to set up a Atmos sensor here and here. That way these only turn on when the pressure in here gets too high. Now I need to make the steam room where all the heat is going to be deleted. I think one aqua tuner with water should be enough here. Um, actually, no, because then it won't be symmetrical. I love my symmetry. So I'm going to put in two aqua tuners, one here and one here. And then up on top here is where I can have my steam turbines. And I can fit two. Now for the plumbing, I think I'm going to run two separate cooling loops here. That way I don't need a double bubble buffer 
I can just have uh, this one cool off the left side and this one cool off the right side. Okay, I finally settled on something that looks a little bit like this. I'm just waiting for some more aluminum to finish this cooling loop here. But I have all of the water sieves in place, this liquid pump to pump out the extra water. Uh, these are in place. I got my power producers here. Now I have two aqua tuners, uh, two steam turbines, and if I was running super coolant, this room would actually heat up higher than what the steam turbines can delete. But since I'm only going to be running water, uh, this will work. The power for these aqua tuners is provided by this power transformer and symmetrically on the other side as well. By putting the power transformers in the room with the steam turbines, the aqua tuners can cool them off as well. So if I go to the plumbing overlay again, you can see how everything is set up. This is the automation overlay, and then this is the ventilation overlay. And I just need to pipe in natural gas here, pipe in petroleum here, and I will get clean water out here. And I guess I should show the power overlay as well. Now these are set to activate the aqua tuners when the fluid inside the pipe is above 14 degrees. And that is because I'm using water. It's the same thing that this is set to. If you use polluted water, you can go lower. Now that there's a vacuum in here, I can deconstruct this gas pump and then sweep up all the junk. Now I'm not going to worry about the atmosphere in this room or this room too much. I'm actually going to leave them open to the main base because this is not a permanent build. Now I sealed this one off and filled it with hydrogen because it is a permanent build. This is going to stay like this for the rest of the game. And it looks like I'm going to need more steam in here. Having only 1.6 kilograms is not enough. When this volcano starts erupting, it's going to heat up the steam too high and I'm probably going to delete some of that heat with the steam turbine because it'll be above 200 degrees. If you have more steam in this room then you have a bigger heat battery and it just keeps the temperature more stable. You don't want to fill it up too high though because then it will overpressurize the volcano. I found a good place to be right above 100 kilograms per tile. Any more than that and it starts overpressurizing but any lower and then you go you start uh, and temperature fluctuations are too great so I'm gonna fill it up by just bridging on right here now I'm going to block this final spot off and hopefully it stays as a vacuum in here moment of truth all right perfect now I can pump in some water right here Okay, that should be plenty of water. Now that I have this all set up, I can change where this is going. Have this go up here. And go into there. And I can cut that. I can deconstruct all of this. Because now this natural gas needs to go up into here. I'm going to run it through the wall here and then switch to a regular pipe right here. Now I need to set these batteries to make sure that they work at the correct times. So we want the natural gas to burn first. So we'll do 95 and 75. And then we want the petroleum to burn second. So we can do 65, 45. And then, let's see, what is this is set to? That'll work. And then these are, okay, perfect. Now I need to fill up all of the loops. So I'll start with this cooling loop here. And then I can use this loop to fill up the other loop right there with a bridge. 
pipe the water over this way. Alright, now that those loops are full, I need to fill up the carbon skimmer loop here. Alright, it looks like everything is working beautifully now. This loop is full, the cooling loop here is full. It looks like it's too full, actually. I didn't put in a buffer. Yeah, it's still too full. I also have to remove a bubble now. It's still backing up, so I have to remove another bubble. Alright, this side is working now. I just need this side to be... Someone should come along here and empty this eventually. Dupes. Someone? Here we go. Thank you, Mima. Okay, now both cooling loops are working. This loop is working. I'm waiting for this water down here to get a little bit warmer before I connect it up to these water sieves. Otherwise it'll freeze when it converts from polluted water to clean water. Now that we have more consumption capacity, we need to increase our production capacity. So the first thing I'm going to do is tap into this natural gas geyser over here. Now that I've tapped into this, um, this is only going to last me another 8 cycles, so I'm going to need to start using this oil well here. So I'm going to basically copy this design here and just paste it over here. I've got this set up now, producing more crude oil, but we are consuming a lot more water, and I just realized that we are running completely dry. So this is not going to turn on for another 20 cycles. This is something I'll probably have to solve in the next episode. Uh, it'll probably be as simple as piping this water up to the top. There's one more thing I wanted to go over here, is the priority on this. So the output water from this whole thing here needs to go into the oil wells here and here before it takes from the reservoir up here. So if I do something like this and disconnect that, then this outgoing water will have priority, and it will only consume from this line when it's not producing on this line. And that should help slow down the water we're consuming up here. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. We got our mid-game power station set up, and once we get into space, I will try and make a sour gas boiler, and that will be our permanent power solution. But for now, uh, Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.